Hello everyone! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Crystal, just in case you're new here, and today I'm going to be doing the Halloween song book tag. This book tag was created by A Beautiful Chaos of Books, which I will leave linked right up here if I could, or down in the down bar below, uh, but she created this book tag and I thought it'd be a really fun one to do since Halloween is my favorite holiday and I just love all the Halloween book tags. For this book tag, I'm going to do mostly recent reads for this. This way it's a little bit more interesting and I'm not like repeating favorite books uh, from overall favorite books, um, a lot of books from this year that I've read. So let's just get into the book tag. The first question is, Thriller, a book that was an absolute page turner. And for me, that is Dracula by Dacker Stoker and J.D. Barker. This book was so good, way better than I thought. I bought it on a whim. I saw it on the Barnes and Noble 20% off table. And I was like, you know what? Maybe I will buy it. I kept revisiting it in the bookstore because the cover was just so enthralling like Dracula himself very enthralling drawn drawing me in uh, but I ended up picking it up finally uh, this book did come out in 2017 and I believe it was a finalist for the Bram Stoker Award I don't know if it won the award it should have because this is the best prequel to Dracula that could ever possibly happen, I believe. I absolutely love this book. I fell in love with the characters. It does go from Bram Stoker's perspective the entire time, also his siblings as well, and some other characters mixed in there, but it's basically a prequel to Dracula, all the events leading up to Dracula, to Bram meeting Dracula. Uh, when Bram Stoker brought this book to his publisher, he basically said that these are based on true events which I don't know if that's true but that is what he pitched his book as and of course it got published and it is a classic over a hundred years later so highly recommend Dracula if you're looking for a spooky read still for the Halloween season it is the perfect Halloween book and I am not the only one that thinks that because if you go on Goodreads everybody who's reviewed it said the same thing it is perfect for Halloween so definitely pick it up if you have not already. Especially if you are craving that vampire book. Uh, I know The Beautiful by Rene Adier did not deliver with that. So if you are craving vampires and you want that typical vampire trope, minus a lot of the romance, there's really not much romance in this book, which is great. It's Technically horror, but it's not very brutal. It's not grotesque. So if you're looking for the perfect Halloween read, like I said, Dracula by Dacker Stoker, who is the great grandson of D uh, of Bram Stoker himself, and J.D. Barker, who is an excellent, excellent author. Number two, Somebody's Watching Me, a book that gave you the serious creeps. I'm going to go with I'm Thinking of Ending Things by Ian Reid. Something about that book really made me feel like I needed to look over my shoulder. I was on vacation too, so being out of my element, reading that book, I, it kind of just threw me for a loop. And psychologically, that book really messes with you because halfway through, you think the story is going a certain way and is a certain type of story. And then it completely switches on you and you're like, oh my goodness, what is going on? It's terrifying. Uh, Ian Reid writes some pretty terrifying books from what I've heard. So if you're looking for something that's going to scare the crap of you, out of you this Halloween season, check out I'm Thinking of Ending Things. It's really small. I think it's less than 300 pages, but so creepy, but so good because at the end of reading books like that, I don't know about you, I like to be freaked out when I read books like, you know, thriller books and psychological books. Uh, I like to be like thrown f like I was in a freaking tornado of like mental fuckness like I don't know I don't know how to explain it but it really just grabs you this book and scares you and makes you think differently in certain ways so I hope this my description of this book scared you enough that you're gonna pick it up and read it or maybe not I don't know but I suggest it if you're looking for something to scare you. Number three, Vampire, a book you hated so much that it was soul-sucking. And for me, 
that would have to be there it's so hard I hate doing this to books but I would have to say Throne of Glass by Sarah J Mass. I tried numerous times to get through that book and it is just painful <laughs> like I think it's the most painful book that I've ever tried to pick up and read and I think because of my age I don't think because it's a bad book I don't think it's a bad book by any means it's just so cringeworthy and so angsty teen angsty for a fantasy that I just can't get into it I just won't ever visit that series and there's just way too many books in that series that I don't even know like I said Throne of Glass is just not for me and I totally totally think it's my age I just think it's my age number four I put a spell on you a book featuring witchcraft or magic so I can name a lot but most recently I read The Furies by Katie Howe uh, it was interesting it wasn't necessarily a witchcraft book but you didn't really know what was going on it was based on the occult so there was some witchcraft things in there also I read The Book Charmer by Karen Hawkins that featured a magical library kind of where books spoke to this girl named Sarah and she was able to she was a librarian and she was able to recommend books to people who needed them by the book speaking to her saying I'll be good for this person or whatever so it's a really cute book so that featured some magic and obviously I'm gonna name Practical Magic because that's one of my favorite books of all time. Uh, Summer of Salt, Harry Potter, obviously, Sorcery of Thorns, uh, Shadow and Bone, you know, all my favorites have magic and witchcraft in them, at least a little bit. Oh, and The Raven Cycle. Yeah. The Raven Cycle. I love The Raven Cycle. It's a different kind of witchcraft and magic. I, I consider tarot cards witchcraft. I consider that like you know, div any type of divination is considered witchcraft to me, so, yeah. Number five, this, this is Halloween, your favorite treat snack to eat while reading. I would say pretzels and apples are my favorite because they're crunchy. You need that crunch for, like, you know, those parts in the book where you're like, mm, you know? So, definitely anything crunchy, but pretzels and apples are my favorite. Number six, time warp. Let's do the time warp again. Hopefully I don't get copyrighted for that. What book or books do you like to return to at this time of year? Definitely a lot of my Stephen King books because this is like the season of King. I feel that the fall just makes you want to read Stephen King books. There's just something about his writing. I think because everything is so built up, his books are just easy to get lost into. So for me, I like to revisit The Shining, I like to revisit Pet Cemetery, and I also like to revisit Salem's Lot during this time of year. Those are my three go-tos for the autumn, for the fall. They just have that perfect fall autumn feel to them uh, and his descriptions and his writing for that is unbelievable there is a quote from Salem's Lot that just describes fall so well that I just I get lost like I just love it like his prose is just so beautiful so I'll read you uh, the clip of that when fall comes kicking summer out on his on its treacherous ass as it always does one day sometime after the midpoint of, sept of September it stays a while like an old friend that you have missed it settles in the way an old friend will settle into your favorite chair and take out his pipe and light it and then fill the afternoon with stories of places he has been and things he has done since he last saw you it stays on through October and in rare years on into November day after day the skies are clear hard blue and the clouds that float across them always west to east are calm while ships with gray keels the wind begins to blow by the day and it is never still. It hurries you along as you walk the roads, crunching the leaves that have fallen in mad and variegated drifts. The wind makes you ache in some place that is deeper than your bones. It may be that it touches something old in the human soul, a chord of race memory that says migrate or die, migrate or die. Even in your house, behind square walls, the wind beats against the wood and the glass it and sends it 
fleshless pucker against the eaves and sooner or later you have put down that what you were doing and go out and see. And you can stand on your stoop or in your dooryard at mid afternoon and watch the cloud shadows rush across Griffin's pasture and up schoolyard hill, light and dark, light and dark, like the shutters of the gods being opened and closed. You can see the goldenrod that most tenacious and pernicious and beauteous of all New England flora bowing away from the wind like a great and silent congregation. And if there are no cars or planes and if no one's Uncle John is out in the wood lot west of town banging away at a quail or pheasant if the only sound is the slow beat of your own heart, you can hear another sound, and that is the sound of life winding down to its cycle close, waiting for the first winter snow to perform its last rites. I just needed to read that to you. So if you haven't read Salem's Lot, highly suggest picking it up. The prose in this book is just beautiful. The next question is, Hungry Like a Wolf, a book you love so much you devoured it. I would have to say Serpent and Dove by Shelby Maharin. Absolutely loved it. Five out of five stars, one of my favorite books of the year. Highly suggest picking it up. I can't wait for the second one to come out. That's all I have to say. Number eight, The Addams Family. A book featuring a dysfunctional family. For me, I put down The Raven Cycle because I feel like Blue and her aunts are definitely very dysfunctional and there's a lot of weird crap that this family endures. So I would have to say that they are quite dysfunctional but not in a bad way, but in a good, quirky, weird kind of way. Number nine, scary monsters. Genre that you are scared or intimidated to pick up. And for me, historical fiction, especially World War II fiction, I just feel like there's just so much of that out there. And I know the history, it just upsets me to read about it. And it is just all so repetitive what's out there right now that I just have no desire to pick it up. So when I see it on the shelves and I see people reading it, it scares me. I just don't want to read it. <laughs> Number 10, The Twilight Zone, a book with a completely different and unique premise. I would go with Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Muir for this one. That book was something else. I felt like I was on like a tailspin after I finished reading that book. It had so many genre bending qualities to it. It was so good and so different than anything that I've ever read recently and I don't think anything will ever compare to Gideon the Ninth. So if you haven't already picked that up, if you like a space opera with necromancers that are queer and are total badasses and crazy fantasy elements, magical elements, it just has a whole slew of things in there that will just keep you on the edge of this, your seat the entire time. The only problem I had with it was the characters and their names. I did get very confused at some points with the characters, but other than that, it was a phenomenal book and so different. So highly suggest that one as well. So that is it. That is all for the Halloween song book tag. And thank you, A Beautiful Chaos of Books, for creating this book tag. It was fun to do. I really enjoyed it. Made me think of all the books that I've read this year and what I really enjoyed and what I didn't enjoy. So thanks for that. And I will be leaving all the information for this book tag down below just in case you decide you want to do it yourself. There's not that much time left before Halloween, which is so crazy to me. This month flew by so fast. Haven't read much either, but that's okay. But anyway, on that note, that's all I have for you guys today. If you want to see more from me, just like and subscribe down below, and I'll be talking to you guys soon. Bye!